Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. As part of EM Rapid course, today we are discussing about pancreatitis. Pancreas is an organ of digestive system and endocrine system. It has got both endocrine and a digestive exocrine action. Endocrine hormones are mainly insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, and pancreatic polypeptide. Exocrine gland mainly secretes the digestive enzymes which break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats in the food. Pancreatitis can be uh, due to gallstones, alcohol, and a lot of other precipitating factors. It can be divided into acute pancreatitis where the patient comes with severe epigastric pain acutely and chronic or recurrent pancreatitis here patient can have repeated episodes or chronic symptoms of pancreatitis major causes are gallstones and alcohol severity of pancreatitis is classified as mild moderate and severe now we can see the detail regarding the causes of pancreatitis it can be due to gallstones alcohol infections like mumps, Oxaki B virus, pancreatic tumors, drugs like azathioprine, estrogens, corticosteroids, many antiretroviral drugs. Theatrogenic, mainly seen post-surgical or post-ERCP procedure, hyperlipidemias, trauma, scorpion stings, and without any cause also, acute pancreatitis can be precipitated. Here, you have to see the first two important causes like gallstones and alcohol. These are the uh, most important and most common cause of pancreatitis in emergency room. Chronic pancreatitis, tropical, can be there nutritional. Alcohol is very important cause. Recurrent pancreatitis is very common. Cystic fibrosis is not very common in India, but Western countries it is very common. There also you can get. Hypercalcemia can sometimes produce uh, pancreatitis trauma also can produce chronic pancreatitis so these are the causes for pancreatitis remember gallstones alcohol and nutrition these are the four important causes we see routinely pancreatitis in emergency room whether it is acute or chronic now we can see the clinical features of uh, pancreatitis Almost all patients will have severe epigastric pain and which may radiate to back. Patient can have epigastric tenderness. Sometimes generalized tenderness can be seen in chemical peritonitis. Many patients can have jaundice, yellowish discoloration of skin and sclera. Left-sided pleurification can be there in many patients. Allen sign. It's a faint bluish discoloration around umbilicus. Gray Turner sign is another sign, bluish discoloration of wangs. These signs may not be very visible in Indian population because the color of the skin uh, may not reflect these signs very well in Indian population. Now, we can see the revised Atlanta classification for acute pancreatitis. It mainly uh, shows the severity of pancreatitis. According to this criteria, we can divide pancreatitis into Three important uh, 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 classes, mild, acute, moderate, severe, acute, severe, acute. That all depends on what are the clinical findings patient can have and it may uh, indicate the prognosis also. So mild, acute, no organ failure, no local, no systemic complication. Moderately severe, organ failure that resolves within 48 hours, local or systemic complication without persistent organ failure. Severe acute means persistent organ failure, multi-organ dysfunction more than 48 hours or single organ failure or multiple organ failure can be there, but it may persist more than 48 hours. So this is Atlanta, more revised Atlanta classification for severity. Now many patients with acute pancreatitis can also have multi-organ dysfunction syndrome like uh, they can have ARDS, they can have renal failure, they can have severe sepsis. 
So, so many uh, systemic inflammatory responses can be seen in patients who are having acute pancreatitis. So, this is the main uh, feature seen in uh, fe feature seen as a complication in many patients who is having uh, pancreatitis. Now we can see the common lab investigation which will be done in pancreatitis. Routinely when we suspect pancreatitis, we do serum lipase and serum amylase. Serum lipase is the best enzyme to measure the for the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. Amylase can also be elevated in so many other conditions. So amylase alone is not a good investigation. We have to see lipase with amylase. It will be positive, mean, positive means threefold elevation. It is seen in 70 to 85 percent of the cases. Hy Hypocalcemia is another investigation which can uh, indirectly tell there is pancreatic inflammation. Whenever we suspect pancreatitis, it is like somebody is having uh, severe epigastric pain who is having a history of gold stones or who takes alcohol, they come with severe epigastric pain. Normally, uh, clinical uh, during clinical examination, you can see severe tenderness in the epigastric area. Uh, we can ask for ultrasound abdomen that may pick up pancreatic swelling. You can see the lower part of the uh, uh, ultrasound. You can see there is gold stone in that. Gold stones can, be, uh, can precipitate pancreatitis. CT is the best investigation to pick up pancreatitis in emergency room, but uh, uh, it may take some time to ship the patient to uh, CT room and pick up the finding. So in repeated pancreatitis, uh, there is no need of any uh, investigations like CT or ultrasound. Uh, but initial evaluation, CT or ultrasound will be very helpful. There is a CT severity index, uh, you can see here, there is Balthasar score, can grade pancreatitis, normal pancreas 0, enlarged pancreas 1, inflammatory changes in the pancreatic and peripancreatic path 2, ill-defined single peripancreatic fluid collection score is 3, 2 or more poorly defined peripancreatic fluid collection 4. Then pancreatic necrosis also score is there. No pancreatic necrosis, zero, less than 30 percent, two, more than 30 to 50, four, more than 50, six. The maximum score that can be obtained is 10. Now we can see the prognosis also with this scoring system, Balthasar scoring system. Zero to three, mild acute pancreatitis. Four to six, moderate acute pancreatitis. Seven to 10, severe pancreatitis. So this uh, uh, patient who is having acute pancreatitis, if you want to score and understand the severity, you have to go for CT scan. Ultrasound may not be a very good tool to understand the severity, but other lab investigations also will be helpful like CRP, procalcitonin, and all will be helpful in emergency room. Now there is another criteria, Ransom's criteria to predict the severity of acute pancreatitis. This is for uh, causes other than gallstones. There is another criteria for gallstones that we are not discussing here. Age more than 55, WBC more than 16,000, glucose more than 200, LDH more than 350, AST more than 250. After 48 hours, hematocrit fall by more than 10%, that is hemo concentration, hemo dilution, uh, blood urea. Nitrogen increased by more than 5 milligram per deciliter. Serum calcium, we already discussed that hypocalcemia will be there in most of the pancreatitis, less than 8 milligram per deciliter. EO2 less than 60. Base deficit more than 4. Fluid sequestration more than 6 liter, 6,000 ml. If the score is more than 3, severe pancreatitis. If the score is less than 3, it is not severe. Then we can predict even mortality with uh, this Ransom's criteria. Score 0 to 2, 2%, score 3 to 4, 15%, score 5 to 6, 40%, score 7 to 8, 100% mortality. So mortality also can be 
predicted. Now we will discuss about the management. Whenever patient is having severe pain, one of the most important thing we should do in emergency room is uh, keep the patient in a bed. Put two IV lines because this patient can have fluid loss. Third space loss can be there. So put two IV lines. Start IV fluid. It's best to give crystalloids like ringer lactase or normal saline. Then pain management is another important thing. Pethidine, tramadol, or antispasmodic can be given. Morphine is relatively contraindicated, but it can still be given in severe pain. Antibiotics are not routinely indicated in pancreatitis because most of the pancreatitis we have seen the uh, causes for pancreatitis. They are not infectious, but if the patient develops peritonitis or abscess, then we can go for uh, third. Uh, we can go for uh, drugs like imipenem celestatin that is a one of the best drugs which can be used in acute pancreatitis meropenem also can be given if the patient is having prolonged pan pancreatitis antifungals may be useful now ERCP that is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography and uh, uh, that can be used as a treatment option in patients with Carlson pancreatitis so these are the options, treatment options to be given in emergency room. Calcium, if it is low, we have to correct it. Most of the patients will have some hypocalcemia. Corrected calcium should be uh, uh, taken and calcium, if it is low, can be uh, corrected. Some patients develop complications like patient can have septicemia. They definitely require antibiotic. Peritonitis, most of the peritonitis are due to chemical peritonitis, but even then they may require antibiotics like imipenem. Some patients can have ascites, left-sided pleural effusion, pseudocyst formation can be there, pancreatic abscess can be there, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome can develop in some patients. Now, this is a mnemonic for uh, pancreatitis treatment, that is pancreas. Pain management, we can give uh, uh, drugs like pethidine, fentanyl and all. And these spasmodic drugs can be given if there is a severe spasm. Nilper orally in most of the patients. Feeding is contraindicated in initial phases. There is no difference between nasogastric feeding and nasogiginal naso uh, tube feeding. Calcium should be corrected in patients who is having hypocalcemia. Remember some patients with hypercalcemia develop pancreatitis that also should be treated. Fluid replacement is the main treatment for third space fluid loss. IV fluids, especially Ringer lactate should be given. ERCP can be given, done in patients who is having Goldstone related pancreatitis. Antibiotics are not routinely used, but remember patient who is having sepsis, peritonitis, multi-organ dysfunction, we may have to give antibiotic. Mepenem silastatin is one of the best options. Antifungals may be started if there is prolonged uh, infection or inflammation. Continuous nasogastric suction should be given for all patients who is admitted in ER.